morning, Solid Steppers. Good morning, Tech to Titans. This is Miss Ward coming to you on uh, not too far from Tallahassee here. I am coming to you from North Florida. And I was just thinking about some of my coaching sessions as of late. You know, it seems as though I need everyone to be very clear about their direction and what uh, infrastructure they're putting in place. What do I mean by that? Well, we all know that we all need systems. You got to be able to communicate to the clients in an intelligent, thoughtful, courteous, and efficient way and still get what you need done and make sure that their schedules line with what's going to be most effective time-wise. Because most people keep forgetting that one of the biggest currencies that are misused, I think in my opinion, is time. And that goes back to time management. You know, a lot of times we'll set a time with a customer and we're not able to make it. And instead of coming up with creative ways to still keep schedules intact, to work with the customer and be respectful of their time, we're intimidated by calling the customer or sending a text message keeping the customer updated. So prime example, you know, my customer is uh, a couple hours out and I need to stop by Tallahassee Marcone and grab some things <clears throat> because I had some other uh, opportunities for success come up. So I believe in one stop, uh, one stop completions. So I have to veer off, you know, and go grab some parts from that Marcone. Customer, let them know it'd be a delay. I'm so many miles, I'm so many hours in advance. The customer's not irritated because I'm ahead of the game. I haven't put them off. I've communicated even through the holiday with them and kept them up abreast of everything. Uh, when I deal with my clients, most of my clients, because I'm doing one-stop completions, I go ahead and forward my parts out. You know, they've already put deposits or what have you on the parts, or they could be warranty or whatever they are, because I supply parts on all my jobs. There's nothing that I do not supply the parts. If a customer calls me and says, okay, Miss Ward, I have the part, can you? Uh, no. Because the reality is, is, you know, they may say they got it directly from the manufacturer, but when I'm doing business, <laughs> I take all responsibilities on me. <clears throat> because if something fails, I am responsible. I have the paperwork to speak directly with the original manufacturer, get coverage and things, so those things happen. And, you know, some people might consider that a control, fee, uh, a control issue, but it's really not. For me, it's me controlling the outcome, you know, and making sure I can manage those outcomes to the most profitable uh, opportunity and objective from my company's point of view and taking care of the customer at the same time because I'm very clear about where I retrieve the part from, the warranties and things of that nature. You got to understand in business, you always want to try to put strategically position yourself in a way where you are always going to come on top and if you don't come on top you at least going to break even and that's the name of the game you know, a lot of times i see people go into these relationships with customers they don't price accordingly they don't leave cushion for error they don't leave cushion for delays they don't leave cushion for misdiagnosis because everybody is human and that happens you have to have windows where you have uh gray areas or you know at least some type of leeway so that if something kicks off you're going to still come out on time most people don't understand that because they go in and they think that everything is going to be cookie cutter now you can put systems in place and 90 percent of your things or in some of y'all cases 60 to 75 percent of your things will uh will work but the reality is, if you are strategically targeting a specific clientele, if you are strategically focusing on a specific group of appliances that are going to give you high profit in those specific repairs, then you have strategically aligned your company for success. And I think that in most cases, very few people have not learned how to strategically align their company for success. You know, one thing I love about Mike Steen over at Clients Bootcamp, he's always
always telling you you can be your own boss and I agree with that but at the same time I feel that a lot of people you know and, and, and everybody not a lot of people including me learning curves are always good so if you have the relationship with the warranty company you learn how to manage those customers the way you would your COD customers you gotta understand a lot of people become so dependent on these third party warranty companies or third party apps they don't know how to go model to model they don't know how to deal with front facing customers and deal with them so every customer should be treated at a certain a certain level of in my opinion elevation and when i say that like i am very popular with my clients because just like i can go street and cold switch and be thugged out i can also be extremely professional you can tell i have some type of training you know, because I actually not only know how to hold a conversation, but I articulate well, <clears throat> articulate well, and I know how to break down anything that's happening with their appliance in layman's terms. I also make sure that if they're inquisitive while I'm doing the repairs, I explain them, I bring them into the repair so they understand what I'm doing and why. And that just opens up a level of transparency that cannot be broken. And I think that's very important because in this day and age, there's so many smoke and mirrors out here that people don't know what they're getting, who's showing up, what's going on. You know, you got so many lead generation companies out here just sending anybody to customers' houses. Half the people background tech, half the people ain't because what they're doing is they're throwing a net into a pond and picking up anything. That's not how I run my business. Everything I do is strategic. Anyone that knows me, anyone that coaches with me or has sessions with me, the first thing we do is we get your house in order so you can actually see what your goals are. And you're, you're able to attain them by staying focused, staying strategized, and being very clear about the goals. And then putting systems in place so no matter where you're at in the process, you can win. I don't care if you're starting in the beginning. People know the way you start a business is the way you end the business. Understand that. I was just talking to Darian Clark over at DCNF because Darian Clark and uh, Slick, we're all friends. Like we started, when I say we started together, we started at, you know, we all went to a plans boot camp. We were all eager to get out here and, and boy, look at that, we made some mistakes. Yes, we did. Call them, they'll tell you. We still making them, but the point is we keep getting up and getting it done. You know, one thing y'all gotta understand, you gotta understand if you fail, failure is not an option. You just gonna fall, fall, you gonna fail forward. Meaning that you're gonna be in a better position than when you started. And what do I mean by that? Yeah, you might have lost something here and there, but most likely you not only learned a lesson, but you leveled up. You know that in order to be successful, you have to level up at all times in everything you do. From the way you handle your calls, to the way you, you your phone calls, the way you deal with your service calls. Like me, I'm constantly positioning the most efficient way for me to go into a client's house with tools, with parts, and being buttoned up. Meaning that when I go in, all my stuff is sealed. I'm not rolling in with something raggedy. I'm not carrying multiple bags. Uh, if I go in and I pre-diagnose the job, everything is going to be in that tote or what I'm, I'm going in with, and it's going to be secure, it's going to look professional, it's going to be buttoned up, I'm going to be clean, smelling good, looking good, talking good, walking good. And that's the thing, because you are presenting your image, you're presenting your company, you're doing all those things that are going to make you not only stand out, but stay, <laughs> I'm telling you, so many levels above your competition because the reality is people out here just doing anything. I mean, let me tell you something. I know all the guys that I work with, they're very clean cut. Every time I see them, they smelling good and looking good. And that's a beautiful thing. And they have such a beautiful disposition, you know, because they are really gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you know. So I don't worry about how they show up because... I've never seen that in them. Even if I pop up on them, they're always tucked in, ready to go, no shirts hanging out. And the reason is, is because this is an example of their own self-image. Some stuff you can't train. 
I can't teach you how to wash your butt. I can't teach you how to, you know, cut your nails. I can't teach you how to pull the hairs out your nose and your ears. I can't teach you how you need to get that fresh line up and haircut, if, you know, every week. You know what I'm saying? I know people get them every five days, 35 days. You know, whatever it is, everybody should have a grooming process just for themselves personally. And when you show up as a representative of my company, I don't have to teach you. I mean, this is all part of the hiring process. Y'all go up here picking up anybody, you know, and that's called desperation. The reality is if you don't have access to the help, you get your business to the point where you can handle it. And then as you layer people in, you layer them on not because you have to have them, you don't got in a situation. You need them because you, when you need people, that's when you make decisions out of desperation. These are things you never want to do as a business owner because the reality is when you make decisions out of desperation, you get desperate results. And that means that could be anything. The reality is what you think working may not be working. Slow down. Dissect the business. You got these last six months. You know, you out here, you grinding. You really need to get, you really got 90 days, not six months, but that's a different conversation. In my personal opinion, you know, you got these 90 days because the last three months of the year, you need to be building the momentum to flow into the following year. Like, you need to be on your game. This is why you always hear me preach about this book called The 12-Week Year. Why am I always preaching about The 12-Week Year? Because it gives you an opportunity to take a year and break it into four quarters. But instead of four quarters, you get four years worth, four years worth of work done in one year. Because you're structured, you're disciplined, you have point, have uh, pain points you're going to address, you're going to put systems in place, you're going to have daily steps, like it's a process. And the thing about it is no one expects you to be perfect, but application is part of the game. You must get started, as my boy Boosie, B-U-S-I, is always saying, starting is half the battle. You can't beat yourself up. Rome was not built in a day. And a lot of times, I see you guys look at myself, Darian, and other people who you deem to be successful in the business. And, you know, that's a compliment to want to pat on yourself. But I don't, I don't advise that. I advise that you find what works for you. You fine-tune your stuff. Because the problem is, if you keep ear hustling off everybody and not applying anything, you never know what's going to work. Your market is a different market. This is why I enjoy coaching people in multiple markets because it exposes me to the algorithm across cash, COD, algorithms over apps, lead chains, warranty companies. Because don't sit here and tell me that Old Republic deals the same way in the center of Atlanta you know, in those high traffic areas where they have lots of texts compared to where they deal where they have none. Because I'm telling you, there's a difference. And all warranty companies are the same because if you have a dynamic that needs to be served or a, a group of customers that need to be addressed, you got to be on your game, man. And you got to make sure that you have the text to service done. You know, and then you got to make sure those texts have great reviews and that they are getting out to these places in a timely manner because everything is a ripple effect. What, what most people don't understand is the word erosion is real. Erosion meaning relationships will erode. Customers, the last thing any warranty company wants, I, you got warranty companies who cleared 300 million in one last year. Look it up. I ain't going to tell you which one, but you'd be surprised. The reality is, is that you got to be very clear about what you're doing and how you do it. And if these people start to see their customer base erode because they're not able to serve, no matter how shady and crooked they may be, you know, you got to understand these algorithms because everything you do is a ripple effect. That's why I was just talking to one of my coaching clients yesterday and we were talking about... Um, you have to be so careful about the information you give out. Like, I don't give out a lot of information uh, on YouTube like I used to because what I found is that people would take what they think I'm doing and try to apply it. And like I was telling uh, her, I was like, you know, you 
got people playing in the pond. You got some people that's just chilling. They throwing rocks, you know, skipping rocks across the pond. They got, you know, they not making a major waves. They just doing a little ripple. They not disrupting the process of the wildlife. Then you got some dummy that come along. It's not paying attention to the rhythm or the algorithm. And they drop a boulder in the damn pond and just disturb every damn thing, you know? The reality is when you get in situations, you gotta learn how to go in and it's not even about rocking the boat. You gotta understand how to read the landscape and make your moves accordingly. The biggest thing I see is that people are so in their own mode of what they want, they don't take the time to read and study the landscape or the algorithms so that you can get in and maximize what you have to do. The key of, to life is not only talking, but you know, God gave us two ears. You got to listen and two eyes to see. You got to really see, not looking through the lens that you, your experiences come through, but li li looking and listening to learn and understand with those nuances. So when it's time to pivot, you're ready because you see the full scope of things. The reason I cover the entire state of Georgia and the reason I, I mean, the entire state of Florida and Southern Georgia and Savannah is because I needed to expand my territory and make a wider net. So not only could I have options, but I could pivot. Like if I wanted to pick up and move to any of these areas that I'm covering right now, I would be, I would be good simply because they're all popping. And they're popping because I studied them. Now, if you think I'm gonna sit in these areas as they get saturated and people come and ruin the algorithm, well, I'll be them pivoted before then because I have other options. I have government contracts. I have coaching and consulting, you know, courses, things of that nature. But I also am very clear about how I move and why I move the way I move. You know, the problem with most people, they don't have a plan. They just out here trying to get a bag. And the problem is, what does it matter if you get the bag if you don't know what to do with it when you get it? Like, are you really doing the, you know, Profit First program where you actually know where your money going? 90% of people don't know because they so used to surviving or trying to rob, you know, make a dollar to, you know, t trying to take a, you know, trying to make... Goodness, what's my saying? Make a dollar out of 15 cents. They don't understand that, yeah, you breathing today, but your ass gonna be dying tomorrow. That's real. So what you gotta understand is take your time, man. Just take your time. These appliances aren't going anywhere. So you need to take your time, structure your business accordingly, because you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna fail. You're gonna have issues. You're gonna find yourself when you're so frustrated. But let me explain something to you. In business, the only reason you're frustrated is because you don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. This is why if you do get a coach, not saying you you can get me because I'm telling you, I'm not for everybody and I'm okay with that because I'm very clear about the direction of, of my businesses and the direction of my students. I do not coach everybody because everybody, a lot of people don't come prepared. Like if you come work with me, you gotta have some paper. I'm gonna keep it real. It ain't about as much as paying me as much as it is about setting the business up properly. You know, I see so many people, I'll tell them to do something and they go find the cheapest option to do some shit. I be mean, like, really? Like really? In the end, are you really saving money? Or are you opening yourself up for another, another liability? Are you building the business credit like I told you from the door so you don't have to use your own money? Like, are you doing the things I told you to do? I'm not just telling people to do stuff that I don't apply and do on a regular basis. What you guys don't understand is I'm constantly creating businesses and opportunities. So as I'm structuring those businesses, I have to constantly go back and run that same blueprint that I'm giving you guys of structuring my business credit so that I am not um, affecting my personal or my other business. That's another thing people have to understand. Whenever you're doing these things, you got to structure it in such a way where you have an additional stream of income. So every business I open or every opportunity, everything is umbrella. So everything leads to everything, multiple streams. But you got to realize you open something else, that other thing that you open, that business should be able to 
survive on its own. It should be self-sufficient. It should be another drain or bill. And the reason people go ahead and do things improperly is because they don't understand there's an additional stream that's supposed to be added. You know, but it's also got to be able to carry the weight of itself. It shouldn't distract from what you already have. If anything, it should cause it to level up. So that's enough of a game for y'all today. But I want you to understand, you got the next six months, 90 days, get that book 12-week year. I'm going to put it down in the description, a link for 12-week year and a link for Profit First. I want you to win, but I want you to not only win, but I want you to be here to stay. So no matter what business you're doing, what structure you need, no matter where you come from, take the time. Take, get these books on Audible and get the handwritten copy so you can go through and read 10 pages a day, man. Do what you got to do to be successful because any area you struggle in is because you're ignorant. You don't know. Doesn't mean you're stupid. Doesn't mean you, you can't do it. But, you know, ignorance is in not having knowledge, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that because, look, we all dropped out the womb not knowing nothing. And look at us now. So at the end of the day, move the fear out the way step back from your business for a moment and then take a closer look look at those areas of opportunity go back over the last you know 90 days 30 days two weeks just look at how the business is fluctuating look at the number of calls you're getting look at where the calls are coming from try to source them properly put a system in place don't waste time going back where there's no water a lot of y'all don't understand when to know when to go downstream. Y'all need to come on, man. If you have understanding rotation and seasons and how they roll, then you'll know when to move, how to move, where to, you know, throw your nets. It's really that easy. It really is. But take the time to understand the business. And then if you're having areas with recalls and comebacks or whatever you want to call them, let me tell y'all something about it. That's life. That's an opportunity to learn, and it's just letting you know you need to study a little harder. It doesn't mean you can't do it. Like me, I, I am not a dishwasher washer fan. I I can't stand getting wet, number one. I can't stand anything that could op open me up for a flood or opportunity to get sued because something done flooded out because of a, a compromised situation with the unit. I can't stand that, you know, and I stay have always stayed away from just because of liability and because of the but the real deal was I really didn't understand them to the extent that I could go in and not only diagnose successfully, but know what jobs to take and what jobs not to. And that's all part of business. So this is what I'm telling you guys. At the end of the day, at the end and you'll hear me say it in my earlier videos, I'm not touching that, I'm not touching that. You know, it's certain things I'm not going to do because it's not cost effective for me as far as time, resources, or for the customer. I'm not going to charge a customer $900 to fix a, a washer that's on its last leg. You follow me? It's not going to happen. And they could have two, two, three hundred book with it, got a decent washer, ain't got a warranty. You know, extended. Like at the end of the day, we're in a world where everything is going up so guess what your prices need to be reflective of the economy and they need to be reflective of the clientele that you are servicing these are things that you can you have to put slow down long enough get organized long enough and you need to position yourself of where you're not in a sense of desperation where i need money so i gotta take any job you can't do that and then you gotta cut your expenses you know, and, and realize you're running a business. It's like running a business is like having damn twins or triples because they always need something. And no matter what, they always are growing. Like, you got to be willing to pivot. A lot of you guys are putting things in place and, you know, you want them to be long-term assist, uh, systems, but guess what? There's no such thing as a permanent situation. People change, algorithms change, processes change, and everybody, anybody know anything, they know business change. And you better be able to not only change with it. I'm watching these people build these damn dinosaur-ass companies, and I'm looking at them like, if you're not, if you're not flexible and, you know, able to, to flex and move, and your company's 
got you anchored in so much debt and so much inflexibility that you got to live that way and work that way even though your your um, clientele may be changing, growing, aging out, you know, you guys have to understand this is real world and real business. All right, you guys have a great day. That's what I got for you this morning.